Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Painted Dog TV. Wow, we have missed all of you. Can't believe this is the first drive we've done since Tuesday last week. But I am very excited to be out here, guys. It's an absolutely gorgeous afternoon here on the Reed Sprague Game Reserve. We have Basil with us on camera this afternoon, everybody. And before I get into anything else, I just wanted to wish a very happy belated birthday to Carol, who uh, I'm sure would have loved to have been with us out in the bush on her birthday. Carol, I'm very sorry that didn't happen, but I assure you all of us here at Painted Dog TV, we're thinking of you and we hope you had an absolutely amazing day and sending you lots of love from all of us. So happy, happy birthday. Basil and I have decided we're going to find you a leopard for your birthday, Carol. So what we're going to do is we're going to go follow up on where Kevin had uh, actually located a female leopard a couple of days ago now, I think actually two days ago, and it was in the Deep Slurt River, and they had he had heard a male leopard vocalizing close by as well, which is pretty damn exciting because that means there were two leopards in that area. Now obviously a couple of days have passed, but that's the most recent sign we have. And we all love driving that beautiful riverbed, the Deep Slurp River. So we're going to take a drive, a very slow drive, along there tonight, everybody, and see if we come up with anything. We'll start at the Mundurin Crip, which is not too far from us, and just go and see if there's any sign around there, see if anything else might be drinking, might get some nice birds, maybe some rhino. I do believe the lions are currently on Kayan Global. A couple days back, the lionesses had actually, the bride had killed a warthog quite close to the corridor, which takes you back into Kaya. And the male lions were obviously close by. They picked up on it and rushed in and chased the entire pride off this warthog. And I believe then the pride walked into Kaya and they haven't come back since. The males were not located this morning, so they probably finished that warthog and moved on, probably on to Kaya as well. Let's see if we find the other very piece of bat tonight, shall we? Just going to quickly say hello to all of our pack members. Ah, Carol's with us. Hello, Carol. Hello, Mary. Hello, Di. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Rosemary. Good afternoon, Barbara. Hello, Betty. Hello, Ulsa. Good afternoon, Jan. Lovely to have you all with us. Hope everybody's well and hope everybody's excited for what we might discover this evening. It really is perfect weather. Sun's out, but it's not super hot. busy checking all of my comms here now, Betty. Betty reckons we're quite soft in terms of the audio. Not too sure if FC can hear me, but I haven't heard anything wrong with the audio just yet. But we will check on it, Betty. Come here. So I have heard from FC everybody, apparently the audio is fine on their side, so I'm not too sure what's happening. Apparently the team's trying to make it louder as we speak.
give you all an update on the wild dogs, everybody. The two females are still in the boma and still doing very well, still being fed on a regular basis. The males, however, have sadly not returned. They are still on the Blue Canyon Conservancy and for some reason, still hanging out along the eastern fence line of that reserve, which is right up against the public highway. And I would imagine it's probably because they are trying to find a way through the fence to then go across into the greater Kruger National Park. They may have picked up on scent or audio of other wild dogs that side and that's maybe why they're holding out on that end. And for the time being everybody we're just monitoring the situation. We're not going to intervene just yet. If at all. I don't know if we will intervene but we'll, we'll obviously stay in close comms with the EWT, they'll let us know what the plan is going forward. Ah, sounds like the male cheaters are on kind lobo as well. Look at what we've got here, everybody. Just stumbled into a giraffe. No, don't go away. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. What a lovely treat for the start of our drive, that. Giraffe looks very plump. Very, very plump. She might be pregnant, everybody. Has now, of course, gone and hidden herself behind a bush. But having a look at that belly, that looked very, very big. Oh, there she is, poking her head above the bushes. Doing a sterling job of hiding herself behind the trees. I do apologize for the issues with the audio, everybody. The team back at FC are working on it. They're trying to figure out what's happening. And we'll keep at it. Hopefully, the sound levels will return. Let's just try to get a bit closer to this female giraffe again. Ah, it appears there are two giraffe here. At least. Don't run away. Not sticking around. Ah, there's a third entering the road now here in front of me. This is a young male. goes.
Well, that was certainly a lovely start, everybody. Always wonderful seeing the giraffe. Hi Shanen, sorry I might have missed you earlier, uh, welcome, good to have you with us. Uh, to answer your question about the female wild dogs, no, they're still very nervous of the vehicle, or vehicles. So the BOMA is still zoned off, they don't really want anybody going past there for the time being. They seem very unsettled every time the vehicle gets there, so the carcass is just being dropped off in the BOMA and then the vehicle leaves. Uh, FC, the update from Basil is he sent the picture. On Telegram. Right, just approaching Lamundur and Krip here now, everybody. See if any of these leopards have come past here, but see if anybody else is here currently. <clears throat> Can't really see tracks of anything here right now everybody but the main reason for that is a massive troop of baboons came past here probably within the last hour so there's just baboon tracks everywhere here let's uh, push on into the deep slurt river Carol, to answer your question about the giraffe, yes, the male lion moved off of that carcass probably two or three days ago and then uh, went on to take over a warthog kill from the pride. So those boys are well, well fed at the moment. I think the vultures and the hyenas would have cleaned up the scraps at that giraffe kill. Probably almost nothing left.
yes he did Andrew. The answer's no there, Andrew. Right, everybody, so we're still moving slowly north, running parallel to the Deep Slurt River, which is off to our left here. But we're about to drop into the riverbed itself. Hopefully we won't have any issues with gremlins this afternoon. I don't think we will. It's a beautiful day, very clear. Haven't had any rain recently. Now I'm just going to stop up ahead here quick and have a look at this nice sandy patch here to see if there's any tracks. And also just to kill the engine quickly to see if I don't hear any alarm calls. No tracks here and definitely can't hear any alarm calls coming from the river just yet. Right, into the river we go. Let's see if we find anything down here, guys.
Good afternoon, Ashley. Good to have you with us. I just love coming down here, everybody. I get so excited every time I come in here. For many reasons. The big reason, of course, is because we know there's a lot of leopard activity along this river. But then just the beauty of this area. The trees and this beautiful dry riverbed that snakes its way here through Blowbunk. quite convinced by the way everybody that the female leopard that Kevin saw here in the river was the Kudukrip 2-3 female. It certainly looked like her. And she was actually sitting up in like a fallen over tree quite a while before she moved off from Kevin's vehicle. spotted an owl there on that lowest left horizontal branch everybody of that fig tree but it's just a part of the tree it certainly looked like an owl no higher up basil that branch there there in the picture now that little end of that uh, branch that sticks upright like that thought it was one of the owls just perched there
pool here to our left everyone it's busy displaying doing that lateral display that they do there's another bull behind him to the left and that's why he's posturing like this look at that that's very impressive so beautiful love it when they do this. Incredible seeing that mane stand erect like that. There's actually several bulls here everywhere. Well, there's four. There's four bulls that I can see. And this guy's the only one that's got his mane erect at the moment, so he's definitely the more dominant of the four, I'd say. Listen to that. Oh, this impressive chap's doing his display. Can anybody tell me which bird was just calling? I don't know if you all can hear it or heard it. Most of the bulls that I see are young, except for the one behind him to the left there now. And it looks like his mane's starting to stand erect as well. Really impressive when these bulls do this lateral display. The bird we just heard calling, by the way, everybody, was the black collared barbet. Slow approach there. Weary of getting into a fight, but at the same time they move slowly like that so that they can size each other up. And intimidate the other bull. Purely on display. Exquisite animals, these in Yala. sure he keeps himself very clean. This bull at the back there, grooming himself. This guy is still posturing. The bull behind him has come in again, come closer, and he's just now starting to flare that mane up again. Still challenging. Seem a bit younger though, this bull. See what he's doing now. It's amazing to see this behavior. 
that'll be a combination of scent marking, but at the same time, just having a good scratch. You'll often see them do that with much sturdier, harder trees. And they do that to build up the neck muscles in their neck for when they fight. You see Kudu and Impala doing the same thing. There go those black collared barbets again. Looks like all of these bulls, everybody, are going to step out into the river in front of us here. Beautiful watching them cross the riverbed. So calm around us, eh? So two older bulls and then two younger bulls. Little bachelor herd. The older bulls, of course, will be very tolerant of these young guys because they're not any threat to them whatsoever in terms of mating. Good afternoon, Michael. Lovely to have you with us, sir. Hope you've been well. Wow. What an amazing sight. Just greeting the older one there, having a good sniff. These horns are unreal. Eh? Amazing seeing the, all of them in the river like this, and like I say, so relaxed with us. It's beautiful just seeing them all walking along the river like this, as if we were never here, completely unfazed by our presence. Yes, indeed, Betty. These are the Inyala. Most wonderful sighting. We had an incredible display between two of the bigger bulls doing a what, what they call a lateral display where they raise their manes up, cock their heads forward, <coughs> often cocking the tail up as well and just trying to show off their size, really. Trying to prove them one's way without having to fight. It's amazing seeing them practice that display. For them all to just walk out here into the river in front of our vehicle, totally relaxed. I love moments like that, undisturbed moments, completely natural. like they are leaving the riverbed now. We'll just go up onto the banks, start browsing up there. Very cool.
So Michael, just to catch you up, we're down in the Deep Slurt River here, trying to find a leopard for Carol for her birthday. Kevin found a female here a couple days ago, just a bit further up the river. So just wanted to come through this beautiful area again and see if we don't pick up on any fresh sign. Nothing yet, however. Well, besides, of course, this brilliant sighting of a Nyala we've just had, but no sign of leopard yet. underneath the overhang of this tree here. Do you see where it landed, Basil? Oh, there went our high-speed daker. Yeah, it's not easy. Let's see if we go closer, if we might pick it up. Yep, nope. just flown off. Brown hooded kingfisher there, everybody. <coughs> So it's just spotted this beautiful brown hooded kingfisher here again, everyone. Off to our right. I'm sitting out in the open in some great light. Good 
afternoon, Brian. Hello, Denise. Do well. Franklin's alarm calling up on the bank. And then to answer your question about the display the bills are doing, no, it's not involuntary. Definitely do it with purpose. Try and intimidate the other bull. Very often sorting out dominance without having to lock horns, just from that lateral display, which I think is an incredible uh, sort of evolution to avoid conflict. What upset is Franklin's up here? Just going to stand by here for a little bit longer, everybody, and see if we don't hear anything else. As Franklin went for us, and while we wait, we've still got the company of this. Very pretty little brown hooded kingfisher. Hoping he might spot a grasshopper or a Katie did and fly out and try grab it. A little bit hidden at the moment. Better. Yeah, right out in the open again. Very sorry, Dyer, that you had to leave us. I don't know what's happened with the sound, but we will try and rectify it as soon as possible. these birds pick up on the slightest movement of the insect pack. Exceptional eyesight. And pretty good hearing as well. Big powerful beak. It's not just insects that they'll actually feed on. They can feed on larger prey as well. Like snakes. Young chameleons, frogs. They have quite a varied diet, these brown hooded kingfishers. And that big beak is 
this certainly helps them hold on to their prey, which they very often then beat until it's lifeless and then swallow it. Alright everybody, I haven't heard anything else, so I just want to quickly check another spot around the corner here where I have on a couple of occasions seen tracks of a leopard coming and going out of the river to see if there's any fresh tracks there. It might have been a leopard that upset those Franklins. Perfect time of day now for a leopard, they would have just started their afternoon, evening, heading out, trailing territory and hunting. Absolutely wonderful sighting of that kingfisher though. So some of you might remember some time back we had very fresh tracks of a female leopard that came out of the river at this point here and she went up this bank and went underneath that dead tree that's fallen over there. So I just want to do pop off the vehicle here everybody. I'll be back with you shortly. I just want to look for tracks behind us here and just sit here quietly for a couple of minutes again. You hear that everybody? Listen carefully. And those in Yala, we've just seen our alarm calling. Let's go. Not sure if you all can hear that, but the Nyala bulls we just drove past earlier, everyone, are now barking. So first the Franklins. And now then, Yala, I put my money on the fact that there's a leopard walking along the bank here. There's a big game path that moves along the ridge of the bank here. I think that leopard's chosen to move along there rather than walking in the riverbed itself. 
it's just back here where we last saw those and y'all are going up the bank. Somewhere here, everybody. That's where those in Yala were now. tracks here. So those Franklins fired off up there behind us. Whatever predator it was moved from the Franklins along this bank and bumped into these Inyala. When they first started alarm calling I heard all of them all, all five of those in Yala were shouting, ba 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 ba, loud box. <sighs> Heart's pounding out of my chest. There's a leopard here, guys. Just whether or not it's going to show itself to us. Now it would have probably just continued the direction it was headed, which is south. So we're going to do the same. Imagine this leopard comes down into the riverbed here in front of us. Andrew's back at FC. He's just announced that he will have an aneurysm if that leopard does that. <laughs> I bet you will, bud. Where we saw those in Yala go up away from the river was right here. This is where we had our sighting before and they went up here to our left. The last in Yala I saw was just here on the left. I don't think they would have moved too far. It would have been somewhere close by here that they saw that leopard.
would also be incredibly exciting to see is this leopard's tracks on top of our vehicle tracks. So I'm looking very closely as we move along here to see if that has happened. to see its tracks here. Michael, to answer your question about the dogs, at the moment there isn't a plan other than just to stand by and see what happens. Continue feeding the females and hope that the males will come back this way. With no plans to go and dart them again. And bring them back. Yeah, this leopard's being very sneaky. It's not using the riverbed. Here. It kind of makes sense though everybody, while there's still a bit of light, you won't find leopards very often walking, particularly if it's a female, out in the open along the riverbed, especially while they're still not completely habituated. But what she'll do is she'll use the shadows under these big trees, she'll be walking in the shadows here in this thick forest bank of the river. If that leopard didn't catch one of those in Yala, which I don't think it did. As I said everybody, the likelihood is it'll just keep heading south and try and move away from those in Yala as soon as possible. To try and become neutral again. And when I say neutral, I mean to get away from the animals that have spotted it and to 
be back in a space where it's unseen, unnoticed, so it can continue hunting. Undisturbed. And with the element of surprise. That leopard has not crossed this river. That's still up on this bank. But there's a big bend in the river here where it might drop and deep. Drop down into this river. Just sit on the corner of the tank here for a bit and see if anything turns up. Or if we hear any further alarm calls. Could be either of the two. Could have crept two, three, or the mother of the cubs. Just gonna sit here for a couple minutes again, everybody. See if I don't hear anything. Right, did you hear all of that now everybody? More commotion along the river here. More Franklins sounding the alarm. That leopard's already come past us here. Leopard's moving pretty steadily. I'm wondering now though whether I should be going back into the river. Stay up on the bank here.
problem is, I don't know how much further up the river you can get here. So we're going to stick with the option of staying up on the bank, everybody, and see if we come right. Some leopard tracks there, everybody, of a female going south along the bank. But I don't think they're from today. Now, unfortunately, this road will take us away from the river for a while. If we do come back to it again at a further point, we can't really get into the river. Some of you might remember this beautiful spot almost like a sundowner spot where there's this big uh, granite rock outcrop. I've often spoken about how leopards might use that as a den site. Now I want to head there everybody and just see maybe this leopard's heading that direction towards the big rock. Leopard might even end up going past Lamunda and Crip at the pace it's going at already. It won't take long before it gets there. Maybe another 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops. Might be heading there for a drink. just so exciting though everybody you know to have all of these alarm calls I love it two different sets of Franklins and the Nyala bulls in between it's definitely a cat walking along here and having a good idea of where the lions are and the current habitat is why I'm almost certain it's a leopard Those Franklins erupted somewhere around here, but it did sound like more in the river than up on the bank. But you never know, a leopard might come up here searching for prey. On this ridge.
What I'm hoping, everybody, is that we might beat this leopard to that rock. It's too dark for me now to go down on foot and track in the riverbed to see if there's any tracks. And I always do this. I always dream up the perfect scenario for a leopard. And I'm just thinking to myself, imagine we... Imagine we can get to the rock before this leopard and just position ourselves nicely and switch off and be as quiet as possible. And this leopard comes and shows itself on top of this granite cap. Oh my word. That would just be unreal. This little rocky outcrop is only or 500 yards from the Munduran Krip. So we'll start there and then if we don't hear anything or see anything in the next 10 minutes, we'll then go and position ourselves at the waterhole at Le Munduran. A very good chance this leopard is headed that way as well. sunset out here this evening everybody gorgeous sky pink that troop of baboons I had tracks of at um, the water hole at the very start of our drive are sleeping somewhere here in the riverbed. Now, knowing leopards, they'll try and avoid baboons when there's light. If it gets dark enough, they do try hunt them up in the trees. It's not to say they don't hunt them during the day, they do. It's usually only the males, though, that hunt baboons during the day, mostly. These baboons might also act as an early warning system for us if they spot this leopard. the baboons again but it's it's them just squabbling over position in their roost by the sounds of things
have arrived at the rock, everybody. This big rocky outcrop. Just going to sit here for a little while and see if anything turns up. This little window right here, this gorgeous spot right here that I'm referring to. <coughs> decided to maybe come and lie up on top of this rock right here. I'm sure many leopards have done it in the past. Beautiful stretch of riverbed below that rock. Thanks. You might be able to hear the baboons, everybody. Oh, this camera is amazing. You can still see the rock perfectly, even without the torch. Fantastic under low light conditions. Basil, can you turn my light off behind me for now, please, while we just stay focused on the rock? disturb it and the camera is still picking up enough light here still be able to hear the baboons squabbling everybody. That leopard might go and investigate that tree. Maybe if there's an unsuspecting victim they can pick off. It's getting dark fast now. Marcy, good to have you with us. Hope you're well. We've been tracking what we believe is a leopard moving along the Deep Slit River. Not seen any tracks, but heard lots of alarm calls that have led us to this point. We're just sitting here in the dark, waiting. sound of Garrett Cookies, Michael. Definitely stick with that. Yeah, those baboons are having a right old squabble up in their tree.
ability to answer your question. The rattling is coming from the new camera. I haven't quite figured out yet how to stop the rattling. But uh, if you are aware of it, you know that we try and figure it out. And we will. wondering now if this leopard didn't perhaps change its direction because of this troop of baboons. Baboons actually pose a threat to leopards if they're not careful because of the numbers of baboons in a troop and also the big males. Their large canines are very dangerous. So for the female leopard very often just avoid it entirely. No mouse and no leopard yet, unfortunately. somewhere around here. Just going to give it a couple more minutes here everybody and then I'm going to head back to the waterhole and go and position us there for a while. Folks, I'm gonna make the move. Let's head to the water hole. Get my leopard on Gareth Scopey's one day, guys. I think the baboons ruined that show for tonight. I've not given up on this leopard, however. I'm convinced it's still in this area. I'm hoping might be thirsty and heading towards the Mundurin Crip.
listen to these baboons squabbling now. Those are the males chiming in there. Rather intimidating for a small female leopard. Those big male baboons.
I'll sit here for five minutes, everybody. I'm just going to turn off all the lights. Those of you can turn the back light off for us again, please, bud. Sit here quietly, folks, and see if I hear anything. Also got an update earlier, everybody, from Andrew back at FC to say that he had heard a whole bunch of, of alarm calls not far from Mumba Dam, which of course is the big water hole close to our camp. So that's going to be the direction I head heading home, straight towards Mumba Dam and see if we don't get lucky with anything there as well. chatter on the radio. Just going to turn those off for now as well. Beautiful night. Wouldn't it just be so wonderful if this leopard started vocalizing now? That would make finding it a whole lot easier. the water here. Something big. Not sure if it's a rhino or an elephant. Can't see it yet everybody. I can just hear something big pushing through the trees beyond the water here.
just going to say now to everybody, it's quite an amazing feeling sitting out in the African bush like this at night. Absolutely no noise. No unnatural noise. Lots of stars up there tonight, Betty. I just don't know if you can pick them up on the camera. Orion's belt is directly above us at the moment. see a couple just to the right of the moon, and one above it to the left. But do you see those three close together there, Basil? See there, they're in the line, standing upright. See if you can pick those up. now then. Just zoom in a little bit. It's very difficult to get it on the camera. Okay, zoom in again. Right there, everybody. There's Orion's belt. Well done, Basil. Zoom out just a little bit. So in your shot right now, everybody, you can clearly see the belt. Just go up a touch. Stop there. Well done. Thank you. So those three stars that stand vertically, everybody, are the belt that goes across Orion's chest. And you can see the dagger, which is those faint little stars to the left of the three upright stars. That's the top of the dagger coming into the belt. And then sort of on the outside perimeter of the screen or the shot is like a rectangle shape and that is Orion's torso. That makes up his torso, his chest. Towards his knees, which are the two stars on the right hand side of the screen but you can clearly see Orion's belt right there in the center of the shot I hope you can see what I'm talking about everybody <laughs> it's very difficult using the camera
no leopard here tonight for us, everybody. Unfortunately, it has changed its plan. It's taken a different direction. We're going to carry on, everyone. We'll head up towards Mumba Dam, where Andrew reported the alarm calls. And see who else we might get lucky with along the way. Beautiful, though, just listening to the bush in the dark and seeing the moon and the stars faintly. Not too sure what that big animal was that's feeding in the block here close to the water, but regardless whether it's an elephant or a rhino, possibly a giraffe, I wouldn't really want to be shining that on them at night anyway, so I'm not going to go and investigate that any further. Jennet, everybody. It's just gone off the road here to the left. Let's try and creep up here slowly and see if we see it again. Sneaking away from us there. Let's see if we get another shot here. We saw it briefly. That was awesome. Very special. Betty, to answer your question, the Southern Cross isn't far away. No, it's actually be visible right now. Yeah, there it is. The Southern Cross is now in front of us, Betty. Um, the stars aren't very bright on it just yet. It's not really dark enough yet, but we are generally heading south. So Orion is sort of north of us and the Southern Cross obviously further to the south of us. baby. You see it? It's about to go across, down. It's going to come jumping to the ground. 
There's a little bush baby here, everybody. A lesser bush baby, lesser Gallagher. Oh, wow, that is awesome. It's been ages since we last saw one. Still moving around in this bush. Oh, man, what a treat. Carol, I hope you're seeing this. Oh, up he went. Just caught the eye as I flicked the torch to the left. Let's see if we get it again here, everybody. towards the top oh man hello you beautiful little thing look at that guys oh man that is amazing absolutely love this little creature they are so damn cute and amazing jumpers they can literally leap about 10 feet through the air they've got an incredible jump oh, let me just jump off to the right I think he just jumped into this tree behind, to the right here. Don't know if we're going to get another gap, but we'll try this gap here. Oh, it's gone down. There he is. It's fun watching these guys jump. It's not easy to catch on the camera at night, but jumping away from us, I think, everybody. Might come up that, might come up that tree there. going down. Lovely stuff. Wow everybody. Large spotted Janet and the lesser Gallagher. Little bush baby. Incredible.
Hello there, Sue. Sorry, I didn't know you were with us. Glad you've joined us. Yes, indeed. Those bush babies' eyes are incredible how large they are, but it makes sense, of course, they need those massive pupils of theirs to soak up the very little light that is around at night to pick up on the movement of insects which they feed on predominantly. Very, very special seeing that little bush baby. All right, everybody. We have sadly run out of time, but it's been a beautiful evening. And uh, yeah, a big thank you to all of you that joined us. We hope you all had fun. We certainly did, and we look forward to seeing you again very soon, everybody. I'm back out again tomorrow afternoon, of course. We hope you can join us. Have a wonderful evening and a wonderful day, wherever you are in the world. Stay safe, and we'll see you very soon. Bye for now, everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.